It's the second big showdown in the Pro Quizzing League Battle of the Youth. We kicked off the tournament with the Brands and Biz Quiz and it's time now to set the clock back as it were with the History and Heritage Quiz. Hello everyone, this is Dhruv Mukherjee and I'm joined by Shaman Nai Banerjee and we are going to bring you an all new episode with six new faces going head to head in an attempt to disrupt the points table. Let's take a quick look at what that points table currently looks like. In the first episode, it was the Ahmedabad Intellects who were the home team that took home the honours. As you can see, 950 points for them, followed by the Aces with 650, and then the Wizards and Geeks tied for 450 points, and the Erudits and the Brainiacs with 350 points apiece. However, if you've seen the first episode, you'll know one thing, scores can change in a hurry and in a big way. There is no such thing as a comfortable lead. No team is comfortable at the top. This entire points table could look completely different by the end of this episode. All right, with that in mind, it's time to meet the six people who are going to take part in this battle of the youth for the history and heritage quiz. Representing the Bengaluru Aces, Girish Suranjay. The Mumbai Geeks will be fronted by Ashish Harshvardhan. Nikhil Singh leading the Delhi Brainiacs today. Orijit Mondol leading the home team for today, the Chennai Erudits. Shivani Rakesh for the Kolkata Wizards. And Akash Shankar Narayan will attempt to keep the Andhabad Intellects lead intact as we go into the first round of the History and Heritage Quiz. Shabon Nayan, tell us what this round is all about. Okay, yes, I do. Let's take a look at the rules and regulations for the first round. The first round is very appropriately called the Knives Out. Each team gets one direct question and in that direct question, there will be three clues. If team gets it correct on the first clue, they get 150. If they get it right on the second clue, they get 100 points. And if they get to see all the three clues, they get plus 50. So this round does not pass. However, teams do have the option of taking a double card. In that case, that their score can just double. So if they are getting it right on the first clue and they take a double card, then they can get a potential 300 points. So without further ado, Ruth, let's take a look at the first question. All right. And it's also worth reminding people that the Chennai Erudits are the home team, which means they have got to pick the seating order for today. And they also get to choose in which direction the third round of the quiz will turn. All right, without further ado, the first question of the first round of the History and Heritage Quiz coming up on your screens right now. This question is a direct for the Bengaluru Aces. All right, he's a fellow of the Royal Society, practiced his language skills by translating Antoine Galland's Les Mille et Nuit back to Arabic. Pardon my French, but uh, you've got some sort of a geographical timeline there, I believe, Shaman Noy. Yeah, absolutely. Geographical timeline, also the fact that he was a multilinguist of sorts. Also, the Royal Society should point you out to a specific country. Let's see what Girish has to say. Yeah, I'll uh, take the next hit. He's gone for a second clue. Now worth 100 points, founder of an institute of national importance in Calcutta. He arrived in 1783 as a Supreme Court judge at Fort William. So we've got a lock-in in terms of which country he's likely to be from and the century as well. Mm, I'll take the next one. One of the pioneers of Indology, he formed a digest of Hindu and Mohammedan laws. Ah, so 50 points. You have three clues in your, on your screen. So your branch is given. And the rest of the teams can relax because they cannot attempt this question. It's only for Girish and the Aces. Girish thinking hard. Uh, I'll guess. Uh, I'll... Unfortunately, this passes through. Let's take a look at the answer, Shaman Nai. Yes, so the answer is, of course, William Jones, right? The founder of Indology and associated with the Asiatic Society of Calcutta. William Jones is a person we were looking for and Kiris unfortunately couldn't score. But we move for the second question to Ashish now for Mumbai Games. All right, on your screens right now, the second question. 
This Bolognese's first manifesto laid down binding populist guidelines like full adult enfranchisement and massive taxation on the wealthy. So if we talk of Bologna, okay, we've got a geographical with, indicator. I'll start with Marx. And he says Marx and he's wrong. It's worth 100 points now. Let's take a look at the second clue. He repurposed many antiquated symbols like the stretched arm salute and the perched eagle. Lots of hints there, Shamonai. Indeed. So the clue gets narrowed down. He has to think hard. Let's see what Ashish has to say for 100 points. Is it Adolf Hitler? He says Adolf Hitler, which is incorrect. But Hitler makes his appearance in the clue. Admired his political skill, dramatic style, and use of brute nationalism to mobilize the masses. A sitter now, Shamunna, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I think so. I mean, you have the country, you have got Hitler. Let's take a look Benito at his answer Mussolini. finally. 50 points. Benito Mussolini. He says Benito Mussolini, and that is indeed right. 50 points. You'd have to say this is probably one of the easier questions of the round, but that's the luck of the draw. Indeed, Roof and uh, uh, Mumbai Geeks, fortunately for them, they get to score 50 here. And, and we move to Delhi Brainiacs, who is represented by Nikhil Singh. All right, Nikhil's question. First clue on your screen coming up now. 1880, this mathematics teacher in a private school in Pune started his own newspaper, which is published to this day. So we started in Calcutta, we went all the way to Italy, and we're back in India now, the western half. Please, yeah, there is there. a little clue there. You have yeah. a geographical clue, you have a timeline. So, uh, next hint, please. He goes for a clue again. This is worth 100 points. Admired by the masses, co-founded the Bombay Swadeshi Co-op Stores with Ratanji Jamshedji Tata. Keywords galosh, Amunnoy. Yes, absolutely. This is a tentative clue. Nikhil has to go for 100 now. Let's take a look at his guess. Uh, is it Gopal Krishna Gokhale? He says Gopal Krishna Gokhale. So he's got a good ah. guess there. It's the wrong one. The middle one of a pan-Indian triumvirate. He was hardly moderate in his political stance. Beautiful framing. Uh, indeed, this is probably an easy clue. Uh, Bal Gangadhar Tilak. And he's right. This is Bal Gangadhar Tilak. And the triumvirate would, of course, be Lal Bal Pal, Shaman Noy. Absolutely. And he was hardly moderate. He was part of the radicals, right? And he was an extremist. I mean, he was part of the extremist Congress cabal. But Bal Gangadhar Tilak, absolutely brilliant answer from Nikhil. All right. Question four to the home team. Odijit Mondol. Born in 1783, I lost both my parents at a young age and was raised by a slave named Hippolyta. Uh, Abraham Lincoln. Unfortunately, that's the wrong guess. Gabriel Garcia Marquez's general in his labyrinth is a fictionalized account of the last seven months of my life. Uh, Simon Bolivar. He says, Simon Bolivar, Origit is a seasoned open quizzer. You wouldn't expect him to miss that, would you, Shavon Nai? Absolutely not. And he's also one of our marquee players, so he proves his worth for Chennai Elgates. And the third clue, if you take a look at this group, says that I not only liberated the lands, but also the slaves of the former Spanish Empire, embracing views of racial equality that were almost a century ahead of their time. So this was indeed Simon Bolivar as correctly answered by Origi. So it was well taken, well stolen 50 points. You would have definitely got it with the third clue. Excellent quizzing there. So a bit of pressure now yeah, on yeah. Shivani, because she is following the leader at the moment. The Kolkata Wizards with their direct on your screens now. This hard lump of carbon was discovered at Kollu during the reign of the Kakatiya dynasty. I certainly hope this doesn't refer to a person. It's not an uncharitable reference. I think we're talking about objects <laughs> now. <laughs> uh, absolutely. All part of our history and heritage. Let's see what Shivani has to say. Uh, can I get the next clue, please? She wants a second clue. When an Uzbek prince invaded India and got his hands on it, he modestly named it after himself. Ah, I'd say this is the sitter of the quiz. Or of the round? Is this Kohinoor? She says Kohinoor. <laughs> what else? Look, let's take a look at the answer. This is indeed Kohinoor. And uh, Shivani gets it right with 100 points, of course. And of course, that the Uzbek prince referred to in the question was Babar, who named it after himself. 
We'll take a look at the third clue for this question. This was this mountain of light. Mountain of light essentially means Kovinur. Uh, lost a lot of its glare after a little hat job by one Hortense Borgia. So who cut the Kohinu into the one the format that we know of. So Shivani gets 100 points there. We will go to Akash Shampanaran for Ahmedabad Intellects. All right. The league table leaders for 150 points. Roughly translating to high city, similar structures can also be found in Argos, Thebes and Corinth. Uh, so, is this Ziggurat? Oh, it's quick to guess Ziggurat, but that's the wrong guess. This marble marvel once had a towering statue of Athena and is home to the world's oldest weather station. So the country should be obvious now, Shamanai. Yes, absolutely. And also a slight etymological clue there in the first clue itself. We jumped the gun uh, slightly, but no problem. We can still go for 100 points. Next hint, please. Please take another hint. The most famous structures at this UNESCO World Heritage Site include the Parthenon, the Erechtheion, and the Propylae. Now, this really shouldn't be missed by him. Absolutely, you have the name Parthenon there. Can be one answer ideally from the clues. Let's see for 50 points what Akash has to say. Uh, is it the Colosseum? He says Colosseum. He knows his wonders, but isn't quite sure of where they are, unfortunately. So the answer is Acropolis. What else, Shaman Noy? Absolutely, Acropolis meaning high city, acro means high and polis means city and Akash is kicking himself, Akash should have gone for this, he, he knew the answer it seems but that's what's the beauty of quiz, isn't it? That's right and let's take a look at how the scores pan out because of that. Alright, so two teams yet to get off the mark, the aces and the intellects, two teams currently on 50, the brainiacs and the geeks and in the lead now, the erudits and the Kolkata wizards by a slender 50 points apiece. The slenderest margin mathematically possible in the Battle of the Youth. It's time now to move to our second round of today's quiz. All right, we're ready to begin the second round. Shamanai, take it away from here. Of course, and this is the second round of our quiz, and this is called the Lock and Load Round 2. Let's take a look at the rules of this round. We have six questions this time, of course, clockwise, we should be direct for each team. So that means there are six questions, one direct for each team. But this round has something called differential passing. For direct question, the teams will get 100 points if they're right. But for pass, it kind of increases with 50 points each time the question passes. So basically, if it's direct to team number one and team number two gets it right, he will get 150. If team number three gets it right, then he or she will get 200 points and the maximum 250 plus 100, 350 points can be gathered from this round. The entire scenario of quizzing can change in this particular round. What's your rule? Absolutely. Like I've been saying right throughout, there is no such thing as a comfortable lead. And right now the teams in the lead are just leading by 50 points. All right, with that in mind, let's get to the first question of a round that's likely to have a lot of big scores. This question goes directly to Girish Suranje and the Bengaluru Aces on your screens now. When the King of France sought to understand the cause of this incident, the medical faculty at the University of Paris blamed a triple conjunction of Saturn, Jupiter and Mars in the 40th degree of Aquarius, which had occurred on 20th March 1345. What is being spoken of? So it's a classic history question, as it were, with a date given, Shaman Noy. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, you have a very telltale timeline clue. Girish, for from I can guess, should get this. Let's hear an answer from him. Um, I guess the Black Death. He says the Black Death. And he's right. He's not going to let any bonus points go around to the others. This is indeed the Black Death, Shaman Noy. Absolutely. So you get 100 points and you stop others from getting and attempting this particular question. So this was the Black Death, the plague that ravaged Europe in the uh, 14th century. And of course, it's back in the news because you know, we have been going through the COVID-19, which was a kind of the plague on its own. Absolutely. But there was no way this question was going to pass to the sixth team. Somebody would have got it before that. Be that as it may, Ashish Hashwardhan and the geeks. The costly Jacob Diamond was the size of an ostrich egg. How did the Nizam of Hyderabad, Usman Ali Khan, put it to good use? 
So it's obviously a question that requires a bit of creative thought, a creative answer. Like uh, did he use it as a paperweight? All right, he says he use it as a paperweight, and he's absolutely right. He's thought creatively, but he's not thought too wildly. It indeed was a paperweight. Mm -hmm. Lifestyles of the indeed. rich and famous, huh? Come on, man. Ah, absolutely, that's exactly what I was thinking. I said, you know, the Nizams of Hyderabad had quite a lifestyle of their own. You know, use a diamond as his paperweight. What are the chances? All right, Nikhil Singh and the Brainiacs. Third question. This program claimed the lives of 20,000 inmates of the labor camp, Mitchell Bao Dora, who died constructing over more than 6,000 replicas of the device. It's thought to be the only weapon system of its kind to have caused more deaths during its production than via actual usage. Name this 20th century invention. You got to love quizzing for these beautiful nuggets of trivia, Shamanna. Yeah, indeed. You know, that's exactly why we all quiz. And you have a geographical clue here, you have a timeline clue here, and it's a slightly infamous invention or innovation, as we can see. Let's see what Nikhil has to say for 100 points. He's thinking hard. Indeed. Uh, I will go okay, for... still thinking. Uh, I will go for a chemical. Uh, it is, is it DDT? Mm. He says DDT. It's incorrect. And the auction on human cruelty begins. Orijit Mondal for 150 points. <laughs> uh, so I will this is the uh, Mars gas. It's a little unclear. Uh, the uh, he's thinking hard, trying to get an answer. Mustard gas. Mm. He says mustard gas. That's unfortunately wrong. Good guess, nonetheless. Passes to Shivani. Uh, is it the atomic bomb system? Mm. She's gone to the complete extreme. It's not the atomic bomb. The intellects. Uh, is this napalm? Mm. Napalm. All good guesses. All. We're thinking along the right lines, it's worth now 300 mm. points. I'll give uh, yes, I'll for Girish, uh, a radium uh, chemical. Mm. Radium is unfortunately wrong. 350 points now. The geeks, like, is it Agent Orange? Mm. Agent Orange. So they all know the weapons of massive destruction, but none of them has managed to get it right. Let's take a look at the answer, Shaman Noy. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the answer. This is none other than the V2 rockets, right? So this was Mittelbau Dora was a clue to the country. It has to be Germany. And V2 rockets actually claimed more lives than it was <laughs> of lives of its own people than it was kind of uh, its target. So <laughs> quite something, Ruth. That's, it. That's, what, that's exactly what I was saying. You know, who says quizzing can't teach you a lot? It's, it's just moments like these that make you reflect right in the middle of a bit of trivia. It's so telling. But this was a bit of a toughie for the teams, unfortunately. But again, that's the luck of the draw. Some will be easy. Some will be tough. Let's see what the erudits get. All right. Pigeon Fancy has raised many generations in hopes of striking rich in the genetic lottery. Breeders could select it for specific traits that presented themselves randomly in a few birds and use these to create new breeds. Which Londoner in the 19th century became enthralled with them and began keeping pigeons of his own? Once again, a timeline clue, a geographical clue, and also something to do with animals. So yeah, why will there be Asian fanciers and why will he kind of randomly select in them in the genetic lottery? Let's see what Chennai Ritz have to say for 100 points. Uh, Carl Linnaeus? Mm. He's got the wrong century, unfortunately. It's not Carl Linnaeus. He's got the wrong geography as well. Passes to Shivani, 150 points. So I'll guess, uh, there's a random guess. Is it someone from the royal family, maybe? If she thinks it's someone from the royal family. That's incorrect. No, I don't have any answer, sorry. Which means it passes now to Akash for 200 points. Is this I'll pass. Akash passes 250 points, Girish and the aces. So, I'll guess Charles Darwin. 
he says charles uh, darwin because like his uh, uh, studying the theory of evolution so he's taken an educated guess as we call it and said charles darwin and he's absolutely right the green light flickers and it is charles darwin indeed what an answer and you know that goes on to say why girish is such a celebrated quizzer and what a fantastic answer you feel proud of quizzes when they work out answers using basic principles everyone does it and i'm yeah. sure the others will be doing it throughout the quiz and a very important 250 points for bengaluru versus they would really appreciate at this point of time in the quiz they needed this lead All right. Question five to the Kolkata Wizards. Cleaning clothes was not always an easy task back in the days of antiquity. Ancient Rome, wearing white togas was a status symbol. The whitest of these were called the toga dash, and worn by those aspiring for public office. Which good word comes from this? Shamana, I'll tell you. This question is a very close question to my heart. It's deep nostalgia for me. It's one of the earliest questions I remember being asked in a quiz way back in the nineties. And one of the best quizzers, Nilanjan Moitro. uh answered this i clearly remember at an open quiz ah that's quite a nice story you know all of us have these little nuggets of information to share and it's indeed a piece of nostalgia so let's see what she uh, to- ani has to say for her 100 points i think she was not even born then uh toga uh, elite she said toga elite mm. it's not a bad guess as guesses go Incorrect, unfortunately. Uh, Passes to end the bar. And they open their account with 150 points with candidate. All right, tell us the story about this, Shamanna. Oh, of course. So toga candida, as you can see, was the whitest of the clothes, right? From this, we get candidate, of course, election candidates and all. But of course, not the uh, whitest of people, if we may say. Uh, but of course, nonetheless, Akash Chandran gets 150 points, and uh, Akash will probably share uh, share this credit with Nilanjan, your friend, right? Right. And now he has a chance to get 100 points. This gentleman had just upset the wet battery powering the transmitter, spilling sulfuric acid on his clothes. He called for medical assistance. Which famous historical utterance is being talked about here? This is why I absolutely love the battle of the youth. You have questions on people, you have questions on events, you have questions on things, and now questions on courts. Yeah, absolutely. Akash, as you can see, is really thinking hard. Uh, he has to get a hundred points for his. He has to bring home a hundred points for his team. He is on hundred and fifty currently. Will he go to two fifty? Let's hear an answer from him. Uh, I have no clue. Uh, he says he has no clue, so it passes to the aces, and the points begin to pile up. One fifty points. He passes. He passes. Worth two hundred points to the geeks. Uh, is it uh, Edison lighting the bulb for the first time? Edison lighting the bulb for the first time. Right timeline, more or less, but wrong answer. The brainiacs. Ah, uh, so is it? Uh, I'm passing. Uh, two fifty points now with the erudits. Home team. I'll pass. I think three hundred. Three hundred points. I beg your pardon. Now at three fifty with the Kolkata Wizards. Is it uh, like um, the discovery of uh, detergents? No, not detergents. This unfortunately passes out. Shaman Nai. I'm sure they would have got points for at least answering the context correctly. But let's have a look at the answer. Of course, this is Mr. Watson. Come here. I want to see you. Right. This was the first ever word spoken on a telephone, an object that we all have used, a quote that all of us have heard. This was the context because he spilled sulfuric acid. This was a medical emergency. Can you believe this, Ru? Incredible, incredible how the history of humanity is written through these beautiful nuggets of trivia, these seemingly harmless trivial incidents. Well, there's nothing trivial about the scorecard because all the teams have gotten off the mark. It's time to take a look at where they stand. All right, in the lead right now are the Bengaluru Aces with 350 points. Close behind them, the Geeks and the Intellects on 150. The Erudits on the Wizards, 100 apiece. The Delhi Brainiacs lagging behind for now with 50 points. But as we've seen, you can get loads and loads of points in a single round like this and there will be one more round with differential scoring at the end so anything could happen to this quiz all right we're midway through the quiz which means it's time to take a strategic time out 
The teams are going to take a breather. They're going to grab a glass of water, reinforce themselves, talk to the team management, talk to the team directors, work out a strategy for passing, answering, taking guesses. And when we come back in two minutes, we will resume the history and heritage quiz in the Pro Quizzing League Battle of the Youth. And of course, not to mention the Chennai Elvis, the home team has to say the order in which they would like this particular round to go. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back from the strategic timeout. The teams are ready for the second half of the quiz. Shamonai, tell us what the third round is. The third round is Don't Shoot the Messenger is this round. There are six two tire questions. Don't one direct for each team. For every direct question, they get a plus 200. There's an accompanying visual with the question in case they fail to answer this in the first two itself they can ask for a hint and they can get a hundred points if they're right for pass it will flat pass for a hundred points they have a double card they can use their double cards they store from the auction two x cards will be used for the by the teams if they are very very confident of their guesses however if they're wrong there's no negative but they lose their important two x card but you can see it passes but in which direction after the strategy timeout, Chennai Edwards are going to tell us in which order this particular round is going to follow. Let's take a look at the round itself. And before the round begins, let's find out who the very special guest is for the History and Heritage Quiz. This is the travel writer, photographer, blogger and Wikipedian. Rangun Dotto, you couldn't think of too many better people to ask questions on history and heritage. And Rangun Dotto will be joining us via video and he brings you the first question of the third round. Don't shoot the messenger. This is going to be for the Bengaluru Aces because the Chennai Erudits have chosen that the round continue in the direction it has been. First question on video on your screen now. Set of quotes on the left and the tower on the right are part of a communication system. Name the communication system. So we've got to identify a communication system from the photograph and the set of codes on screen. This right now is worth 200 points and it's with the aces. Indeed. Yeah, I think he is trying to figure out from the it is probably a un, bit unknown kind of symbols that can be seen here. But I'm sure most of us have heard of these symbols in some context. Okay, this is the first clue, only this picture. Yep, he just has the codes and the photo to work with. If he wants, he can ask for a clue. Do you need the purpose of this thread? I'll take the next hint. All right, he's gone for a hint. And for 100 points, it is also known as the optical telegraph. So straightforward yeah. figure there. So this is like, uh, like this. Codes are for like people standing up. Mm. It says codes for people standing up, which is not the right answer. And it passes now for 100 points to the geeks. Ashish Hashwabhan. A simple sign language. Mm. It goes for sign language. It's incorrect. Nikhil Singh for the Brainiacs with a guess, perhaps. Uh, I guess uh, uh, no, I, I don't have a clue. So the hems and haws, but it passes now to the home team. So semaphore. He says semaphore, and there's the open quizzing class coming out from Urujit Mandal Shamanai. All right, Shamanai, tell us about this beautiful answer slide that we have before us. Yes, so of course these were the semaphore towers, right? I mean, they were uh, they used to dot throughout the British Raj at one point of time. It's a form of a signaling system where you can actually convey a form of, you know, with the form of visual, you can actually convey very important information. And that's exactly what semaphores used to be. And Origit absolutely knows his heritage very, very well. And we know our Beatles, don't we? Because that's the uh, cover <laughs> of the album Help with them referencing the semaphores. Tomb on the picture contains the mortal remains of a great Indian ruler. Name the ruler. So the second question on your screen, 
This is a tomb and it contains the modern remains of which ruler? This is for Ashish, Harshvardhan and the Mumbai geeks. There does appear to be some sort of a lag though in his feed. We're trying to sort that out. In case we can't get his connection back, Shamana, I believe the question will just pass as normal. Absolutely, it will pass clockwise. So the first case will be of Nikhil's. But yeah, it can happen to the best of us in the home setup. We can't. We have to rely on technology, and technology sometimes deceives us. Well, it's part of the lottery, I guess, of quizzing from home. There's nothing we can do. So it does pass now for 100 points to the Brainiacs. So uh, you have uh, given a clue. I... Yeah, I think Nikhil is probably asking for a clue, but uh, uh, direct was for Ashish. Nikhil uh, has to work on his own. He's thinking hard, he's looking close, but doesn't look confident. Okay, give me 15 seconds. Unfortunately, that's not allowed. No, I'm giving the, I was giving the guess. Uh, so, uh, is it uh, uh, King Ashok? Mm. He says, Ashok, we finally have a guess on this question. It's wrong. The erudits? Uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj? Mm. He goes for Chhatrapati Shivaji. That's wrong. Shivani and the wizards. So, I'll go for a double here. She's going for a double here. Wow. Is this the Sher Shah Shuri, Suri tomb? Sasaram Bihar. Wow. He says Sasaram Bihar. She knows everything about it. What a brilliant moment this is. This is, in fact, the first use of the 2x card in this tournament. And it's by the Kolkata wizard, Shivani Rakesh. What do you say to that, Shamonai? 200 points straight for her. Yeah, the clue was, uh, it is located on the GT road. Shivani, of course, answered this without the clue. This is a very cheeky reference to the fact that Chesha built the GT road, as we know, in his uh, timeline, in his lifetime. Ah. All right. So, ah. big moment that was, which means the third question of the quiz now for the Delhi Brunex and Nikhil Singh. It's good to see Ashish is back for the geeks. We're back up. Resuming, all right, Rangunda, take it away with question three. Identify the famous monument. As simple as that, identify the famous monument. And I think this is something that many of us would have been to and seen with our own eyes, Shamunai. Indeed. And uh, what better team than Delhi to get this? They don't want to miss this. It's right up their alley. Uh, is it... Uh... Tomb. Reads a sigh of relief. He's absolutely right. This is Sabdar Jung's tomb indeed. Delhi Gradius gets another question on Delhi and hits it absolutely out of the park with a 200 points. And the clue was, is the last instance of Mughal style architecture in Delhi, the Sabdar Jung tomb. Because there was a nearby airport as well, the Sabdar Jung airport. I'm sure many of us have heard in this context as well, even if we haven't been to this place, but of course a must visit, as Drew was saying. It's an absolutely beautiful part of New Delhi, worth the visit, especially if you go a little later in the year when the air is cool and you can just stroll around. But anyway, that's yeah, for another yeah. time. Right now, we're in the middle of the Don't Shoot the Messenger round. Rangunda now has a question for Orijit Mongol and the editor. Name the temple in Bangkok housing the new statue of reclining Buddha. All right, we've got a reclining Buddha, beautiful massive statue. And the question is simply to identify the, the location. So we're not looking for the city because he said it's in Bangkok. We want the location. Bit of a tasty Shabunnai. Yeah, indeed. But, uh, you know, you never know from the heritage pitch which countries can this be in. Urijit is thinking hard. For... I, I, I would like to have a clue. He's taken a clue. Yeah. Okay. The clue is an important tourist destination. I'm not sure how much this will be of a help to Rajit, but he's a seasoned open quizzer. He should get this. He's got a wry smile on his face with the clue. And he... 
Uh, pass. Yeah, he throws his hands up, passes to Shivani. So, uh, is it uh, the? No, I don't have the two. I'll pass. Now, it's still worth a hundred points for Akash and the intellects. Uh, is it? The, is the yeah. temple inside the airport, Suvarnabhumi Airport? So he says Suvarnabhumi Airport. He's right about the fact that's Bangkok, but I wrong just, answer. Uh, randomly guess the Golden Buddha Temple. Golden Buddha Temple. All right, back to basics. Keeping it simple, but wrong. <laughs> and Ashish's technical issues continue. We can see him now, but we can't hear him. Just taking a guess. Is it Shwe Dagon Pagoda? It says Shwe Dagon Pagoda. He switched geographies quickly there. Passes to Delhi Brain. I was saying resting golden Buddha temple. A uh, bit of value addition there. Resting golden Buddha. No, it's incorrect. All right. The answer time now. And I happen to have visited yes. the site in 2012. Shaman, I'll tell you uh, with my wow. partner at the time. Beautiful, beautiful location. This is indeed the Wat Fo. What, of course, uh, Shabana, would be a generic word for temple, if I'm not wrong. Yes, indeed. And this is possibly the most prominent of its kind uh, in Thailand. And it, I think if uh, you, have, you have probably been there, so you would know better. It also houses a university nearby. It's a very Correct. beautiful place. All right. We're ready with the fifth question of the quiz. On your screens via video from Rangundatto. This is for Shivani Rakesh and the Kolkata Wizards. Identify the location of this famous culture. All right, the location of this famous sculpture. Hmm. Again, the geography should be fairly I obvious. I would like to go for a clue. She yes, goes for a indeed. clue right away. Wow, she goes for a clue. She's not making oh. guesses. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Again, a must-visit place for all, all Indians. Let's see what Shivani has to say. Okay, so I'm guessing uh, just a random guess. Bhimbetka wrong. Bhimbetka is wrong. Passes to the intellects. Uh, is it in the Ajanta Caves? Good guess, but this is not the Ajanta Caves. Elora Caves. <laughs> Girish trying an age old trick. Not the Elora Caves. Unchimpable, as we say. Uh... <laughs> These are chola. These are chola. Uh, passes to the passes to the brainiacs. Ah, uh, uh, so it's from. Uh, yeah, so I don't think so. Uh, he passes to the editor. Elephant cave. And he takes no time in answering Elephant Caves, Shamunai, off the coast of mainland Mumbai. Indeed, and not very far away from Mumbai. As I say, it's a very must visit. And you had Ajanta as a guest, you had Elura as a guest, and Origit teams it off with Elephant Caves. And Ashish looking very sheepish because Delhi Brain X managed to answer Safdarajan's tomb, but the Mumbai geeks have unfortunately let this one pass. Last question of the round. Is associated with which historical event? All right. Okay. This is heritage, but it looks very modern. This monument is associated with which historical event? Akash peering closely, but nobody seems to have recognized it right away. I think Origit seems to have an idea what it is. Yeah, I think so too. But Origit has to wait for at least three people before him. All right, he's gone for a clue. It's located in Dhaka, Bangladesh. All right, so the geography is squarely associated with Dhaka, which reduces a lot of the guesses and filters it for the participants. Now, the lottery begins. So did you say anything of that this is located in a different country? Now, the clue is quite straightforward. It is in Dhaka, Bangladesh, the capital of Bangladesh. Uh, Waiting on an answer. The Great Bengal famine? 
Mm. It goes for the Great Bengal Famine. It's the wrong, and the Aces have it now. Um, I'll guess the uh, partition of Bengal. The partition of Bengal is incorrect. The Geeks. Mm, like, is it 1971 liberation of? Mm. All right. The guesses coming as expected. Not the liberation war. Uh, uh, is it the uh, memorial to um, uh, to remember the? Um, uh assassination of uh, mujibur rahman not the assassination of mujibur the erudits uh, so this is a 1952 language martyrs uh, event uh, it is called sahid minar i told you he seemed to know the answer right at the beginning this is indeed the bengali language movement bhasha andolan brilliant answer there from odijit shamonna yes yes absolutely and he You know, took the full advantage of the fact that he turned all the way to him, and there's a very, very important hundred points for Chennai Erudits at this point in time. The breathe a sigh of relief, albeit temporarily. The Bengali language movement monument, also known as the Dhaka Shohid Minar, right? I mean, this is a national monument in Dhaka, established to commemorate those killed during the Bengali language movement demonstrations of 1952. as originally rightly pointed out it was then the east pakistan and as we know uh, the 21st february is currently recognized by unesco as the international mother language day for an important part of our heritage well through let's take a look at the scores all right it's time to take a look at the scores now and we've got the home team in the lead now and that's the chennai erudits with 400 points not far behind the aces with 350 and the kolkata wizards on 300 points Then you've got the Brainiacs on 250, and 150 points apiece for the Geeks and the Intellects. So the difference between the lowest and the highest score right now is just about 250 points, which is just which is literally chicken feed in the scheme of things in the differential round, which is what the fourth round is. Shamanai, tell us what round four is called and what it's all about. Absolutely, the last and final round for this particular quiz. Let's take a look at the rules. This is the final frontier. Six questions, anti-clockwise, one direct for each team. This is a differential round, just as it was for round two. For direct question, you get hundred, but for pass, you get ten hundred fifty, then two hundred, two fifty, three hundred, and most, or a maximum of three fifty points up for grabs. So as you were saying, group, so two fifty points difference is very negligible, and it's probably. It's just a matter of a question here. All right. So it is the first question of the sixth round. We've continued this entire quiz in the same direction it's been going, but now it's time to start with Akash Shankar Narayan and the Ahmedabad Intellects. First question: With which commonplace items can one connect these famous structures in these specific color schemes? Uh, these are the new currency notes. Currency notes is my answer. Ha <laughs> ha! Indeed. As simple as that is the new currency notes. You expected him to answer that, and he left nothing for the others. Hundred points in the bank for Akash Shankar Narayan and the Ahmedabad Intellects. Akash seems to know his uh, money well. Uh, these are of course <laughs> the Indian bank notes. Uh, so if you see, you see the Sachi Stupa, then you have the Hampi, then the Konak Sun Temple. All of these can be seen in the backside of our Indian bank notes. All right. Question two for the Kolkata Wizards: Which festive date sees revelries like these in the various states of India? You got photos from Gujarat, Punjab, and Assam. All beautiful, colorful photos. It's a, it's a uh, festival. Just request. Can you a little bit zoom it? Unfortunately, that's another drawback. We cannot uh, acquire to that. Okay, yeah. so is... I'll associate the face festive date as fourteenth January. What happens? Harvest then? festival. Harvest festival. Gujarat is the Uttarayan, Punjab is Lori, and Assam uh, is 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 it called Pongal? No, not Pongal, but not Pongal. Is it a Pongal harvest is... festival? Wait, she seems to have combined a lot of answers in one, but she did say the date right at the beginning. So Shabana, she gets a full hundred points for fourteen January, I believe she said, right? Yes, indeed. That is when we celebrate the Makar Sankranti at various parts of India. It's usually different revelries, as the question was saying. She pointed out correctly for Gujarat it was Uttaran, for Punjab it was of course the Maghi, and but for Assam this was the Mag Bihu, which she was probably wondering. She was probably thinking aloud. All right, 
Question three now for the editors. Which veteran of the Boer War and the first honorary citizen of the US can be connected with these images? So a lot of hints in the framing of the question itself, plus four photos. Orijit Mondol looking hard. This shouldn't be difficult to crack, Shravan Nai. Yeah, I don't think so, especially for Orijit. Well, it's a it's probably a giveaway for him. I mean, you have a veteran of the Boer War, also an honorary citizen of the U.S. That means he's not from the U.S. Uh, can I answer? Four important photographs. Uh, so I would say uh, Winston Churchill. He says Winston Churchill. Uh, yeah, so a Boer War. He was a Boer War veteran, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that is, that's from that uh, film of the prosthetic wala scene. Uh, mm. yeah. And he seems to know his funda, as we call it. It is indeed Winston Churchill. Shamunai, what are the four connects to Winston Churchill? Clockwise, you can see the lake scene at Norfolk that was painted by Winston Churchill. That is the 1943 Bengal family. Not particularly a good memory for this part of the world. Uh, it was majorly catapulted. Uh, it was, Churchill was a catalyst for this. Uh, Churchill won a Nobel Prize in Literature in the year 1953. And that is Gary Oldman as Winston Churchill. He took literally hours and hours of makeup to put on that particular look. And he played it brilliantly. What say you? Absolutely right. And it's, it's, it's good to see that uh, in, in one look, they managed to put all the pieces together and answer it. He'll be proud of that. All right. It's now a direct for Nikhil, a historical personality with many names who taught the Indians about the science of material gain. Who is this person? Yeah, three image clues, one textual hint. Nikhil should get this if he's trying to put together the pieces. But that's what the connection is all about. You have to think on the spot. Uh, is it Cotillia? He says Cotillia. Uh, I would say. Uh, basically, I was thinking of political scientist, and he taught Indians about uh, the different names of material and so. He looks a little unsure, but he has no reason uh, to be Cordial because Chanakya. he's. Ah, that's the word they were looking for, Chanakya. As the question said, he's known by many names. Well, he unnecessarily took a lot of tension and stress upon himself. He was absolutely right, Shamunai. Yes, absolutely. And he was very adept at, you know, uh, doing two plus two because you had uh, the Arthashastra there that was Chandra Prakash Divedi and that is Niccolo Machiavelli. Cortilia, of course, was the writer of Arthashastra. Chanakya took the name of Cortilia while writing that. Chandra Prakash Divedi, of course, most famously known not to this generation, perhaps, as uh, the, the title role of Chanakya. And that is Niccolo Machiavelli. Machiavelli, I mean, was a shrewd political scientist of his time. And Sanukke is often called the Machiavelli of India. All right. Last two questions of the second quiz, the history and heritage quiz. Lots at stake here. It's time to take a look at the scores. Anything could happen in these two questions. You've got the Chennai erudits on 500 points. Very, very close behind them. The Wizards with 400. The Aces with 350. The Brainiacs also with 350. The intellects with 250 and the geeks with 150. Don't let these scores fool you. It doesn't matter. Any of these teams could, in the course of these two questions, come back to win this quiz. And that's exactly what's at stake. And that's why all the teams are going to be looking carefully. They're going to be biting their nails. There's going to be a lot of tension. All right, Shamunai, I'm excited. Are you? Oh, indeed. You know, two questions, anything can happen. And, you know, as we have already seen, that lots of things are at stake here. I mean, teams have to get it, teams have to miss it. Lots of permutations and combinations possible. Let's take a look at the fifth and penultimate question for this quiz. This is on screen for the Mumbai Geeks. Ashish Hashwardhan, which Genovese admiral can be connected with these images? You've got a map photo, you've got a photo of people with a sign, you've got someone hanging from a rope ladder and an illustration. All right, all the teams waiting for an answer. Like it is Admiral Ceylon. Mm. Ashish says Admiral Ceylon looking at Sri Lanka. Unfortunately, that's incorrect. All right, worth 150 points now. Oh, to the aces. Oh, I guess so. Columbus. 
So I think the blanked out city should be Colombo. That should be named after him. And like that guy in the picture is on a sea, like on a ship sail, and like indigenous people because he like uh, like discovered America and like the indigenous controls. You know, huge huge moment here. That's the right answer, Christopher Columbus. But you can't be looking at the aces, Shaman. I don't look at Ashish. He was clasping his face. He realized that he had slipped up and he had missed an easy hundred points there. You have to feel for him, poor chap. Indeed, and more than Ashish, I mean, I'm pretty sure Origit is probably cursing at Ashish at this point in time because Irish actually matched with Origit on 500 points. So you had Indigenous <laughs> People's Day here. That was Rodrigo de Tran. That's Rodrigo de Tran was a guy who first sighted the land, and Columbus apparently had a very hefty sum for him. But we do not know about the money. But what we know is a uh, this little cute remembrance as you can see in the picture. So that was King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, his prime sponsors. And as Girish pointed out, that is Colombo indeed, that is named after Christopher Columbus or Christopher Colombo. A scorecard told in three images, the despondent geeks, the furious erudites, and the temporarily pleased aces, but they also know now that the last question lies with them. And they can put this quiz to bed by simply answering it getting 100 points and getting to 600. Everyone else leaning forward in anticipation. Mind you, it doesn't matter what your score is. You're getting points for your team in the league. It matters big time. All right. Question six of the History and Heritage Quiz. The last question of the day on your screen now for Girish Suranjay and the Bengaluru Aces. Which one-of-a-kind ruler preceded and succeeded by half-siblings can be connected with these images? Uh, so I can take a guess. I guess uh, Razia Sultana. He says Razia Sultana. I think the that should be her tomb, and like I think that should be the uh, like the film depictions of her. What a champion performance this is! A moment to remember the the Bengaluru Aces winning the quiz of the last two questions. A hundred points takes them to six hundred. He punches the air. Shamunai, that was actually an excellent answer under pressure. Very well answered by Girish there. Uh, Girish was pretty confident of the fact that it was a one of a kind ruler because she was the first ruler of the Delhi Sultanate, the first and only woman ruler. You have the tomb of Razia Sultana there, you have the Kila Mubarak there. Uh, there is Tamal Amrohi's Razia Sultan. And the fourth image is, of course, Razia Sultan by Ibrahim Al Qazi, another reputed playwright. You can actually see Nasruddin Shah there with. Razia Sultan being played by Rohini Hakangadi. 2 plus 2 done by Girish there and a fantastic, fantastic answer. Taking home an important 100 points, but most importantly, winning his team a very, very important 6 points in this particular quiz. Look what say. Well, and I, like I said at the beginning, there's one team that is right now fighting to keep its place intact and five teams looking to disrupt the points table. Let's take a look at the scores for today's quiz. The final scores. All right. With 150 points, the Mumbai Geeks who unfortunately let go of precious points towards the end. Akash Shankar Narayan and the Ahmedabad Intellects with 250 points. 350 for the Brainiacs. 400 for the Wizards. And the home team who are in the lead and should have won this quiz are on 500. But the winners with a brilliant last gasp effort Girish Suranjay and the Bengaluru Aces with 600 points. They're going to be cheered on by the teammates. They're going to be celebrated because they've managed to disrupt the points table. Shavun Rai, tell us how this impacts the points table. First, let's take a look at what the points for today's score are. Yes, so we can see Ahmedabad Intellects finishing on 250, so that means they get two points. Bengaluru Aces, their score is 600, and what a fantastic score that is, as a very tightly fought context, but they're rating six points for that. Chennai Edwards on 500, which means they get five because they came in second. Delhi Brainiacs on 350, their points, they get three for this particular quiz. Kolkata Wizards finishes on 400, and that includes a very valuable double, as you can see, and they take home four points. With Mumbai Geeks finishing 150, kind of feeling tough for Mumbai because his internet was not really supporting him. But nonetheless, what a good show from him too. But for this quiz, Mumbai Geeks will take in one point. 
and at the end of two quizzes as we can see bengaluru aces currently on 1250 points their pass score is 11 they were second after the end of the first quiz now they've jumped to the first position this is very important for them 11 points to them Ahmedabad intellects their score is 1200 and they are on eight currently kolkata wizards on 850 their score also on 8, but as you can see, Ahmedabad intellects have a slightly more margin than Kolkata Wizards in terms of points, as a result of which Ahmedabad intellects is currently second on the points table. Then after Kolkata Wizards, we have Chennai Aerobics also on 850 points with 7 points, Delhi Brainiacs with 700 in their kitty, but they have a total of 5 points, Mumbai Geeks total of 600 after 2 quizzes and they have scored 5 points as of now. Wow, the Mumbai geeks know one thing. It doesn't matter where they are right now, the points table. They could come back and win the next quiz in a big way. Remember, on paper, there are thousands of points that you could score in a quiz potentially. So anything can happen and trust us, anything will happen. We are going to see you in the next episode, which is going to be the science and tech quiz. We might see some faces returning from the first two quizzes. Who knows? Everything to play for. The competition is getting hotter, the rivalries are becoming fiercer and the stakes are beginning to seem just that little bit higher. This has been an exciting week and we'll see you again for another one. This is Shamunna and Dhruv signing off for this episode saying take care everyone, stay safe, see you next time.